Welcome to this, the second of our online Easter services. Last evening was Monday Thursday, today Good Friday, and in a couple of days Easter Sunday. It is somewhat different and maybe surreal that we are in the one of the most holy and special times in the church year without our usual practice of gathering as Christ's body in our congregations. With the pestilence of COVID-19, many of us find that we are isolated in our own homes. Our service order is provided in the link below. Or should you want to know when our service is online again, please click the subscribe button. We encourage you to gather your family together of your household and to receive God's word together. If you have the technology and want to use your smart TV or casting device on the big team, this is really encouraged as it then gives everyone the opportunity to see and join in with the responses and hymns. Our Good Friday observes the passion and crucifixion of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Our reflections will be aided by God's Word, the ESV version, specifically hearing the account as told by John the Baptist, music, hymns, prayer and visual media. In the acknowledgement of Christ's death for your sins, you are invited to reflect on our Lord's passion and death through the rest of the day and into Easter Saturday. And we look forward to you joining with us on Easter Sunday when we hear the proclamation that Christ is not dead, but risen. May the Lord enrich you in his holy word through this online service. God forbid that I should boast of anything but the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. In him is salvation, life and resurrection from the dead. By him we are redeemed and set free. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Merciful and everlasting God, you did not spare your only Son, but delivered him up for us all, to bear our sins on the cross. Grant that our hearts may be so fixed with steadfast faith in him, that we fear not the power of sin, death and the devil. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah 52, reading from verse 13. Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up, and shall be exalted. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them they see, and that they which they have not heard they understand. Who has believed what they have heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no former majesty, that, he should try, that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by man, a man of many sorrows, and acquainted with grief, and as one with whom men hide their faces. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed by our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his stripes we are healed. All we, we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and as for his generation who considered that he was cut off of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people, and they made his grave with the wicked, and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence, 
and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He was, has put him to grief. And when his soul makes an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death, and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many, and makes intercession for the transgressors. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 4 from verse 14. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathise with our weakness, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, 
Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was healed, heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obeyed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you willed that your Son should bear for us the pains of the cross, and so remove from us the power of the adversary. Help us to remember and give thanks for our Lord's passion, that we may receive forgiveness of sin, redemption from everlasting death. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
we hear the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to the Gospel of St. John. We start from John chapter 18, verse 1. After Jesus had spoken the words of his last supper, he went out with his disciples across the Kindred Valley, where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This, this was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost not one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he entered with Jesus into the court of the high priest. But Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the servant girl, who kept watch at the door, and brought Peter in. The servant girl at the door said to Peter, 
You also are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and there was standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. The high priest, then questioning Jesus about his disciples and his teaching, Jesus answered them, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all Jews come together. I have had said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said these things, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is this how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If what I said is wrong, bear witness about the wrong. But if what I have said is right, why do you strike me? Annas then sent him down to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. So they said to him, You also are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it. And at once, a rooster crowed. <coughs> then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not doing evil, would we not have delivered him over to you? Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfil the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or do others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would not have fought, that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from this world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, And I find no guilt in him. But you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas! Now, Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out 
wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold this man! When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to the law, he ought to die because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me. Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. So from then on, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat him down on the judgment seat at the place called the Stone Pavement, and in Aramaic, Gabata. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king! They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have nothing but Caesar! So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus.
So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus went between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but rather, this man said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and delivered them into four parts. And one part for each soldier. Also his tunic. But his tunic was seamless, woven in one place from top to bottom. And they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots to see whose it shall be. And this was to fill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sisters, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, 
he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to his disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scriptures, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken, and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and of the other who had been crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness to this testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again another scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus also, who early had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. Because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. Glory be to Jesus Who in bitter pains Poured for me the lifeblood From his sacred veins Grace and life eternal in that blood I find blessed be his compassion infinitely kind blessed through Be the precious stream Which from endless torment Did the world redeem
sacred veins Grace, mercy and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. On this Good Friday, when our Lord Jesus took our sin upon himself on the cross, help us, Lord, to be able to meditate on this word. Open our ears to hear it. Open our minds to think it through. Open our hearts and souls to receive it like a sponge, so that it may strengthen and support us through to Easter Sunday and beyond. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God is dead. The light of the cosmos is snuffed out. The one who gives life to all men breathes his lust. God is dead. The eternal word who was and is and is to come gave up his spirit. On Christmas, with the sound of angels singing to the shepherds in the distance, the virgin held her son. God had come to earth to save us. We sang, Now spear shall pierce him through, The cross he bore for me, for you. Hail, hail, the word made flesh, The babe, the son of Mary. The virgin at his birth covered him, Wrapped in swapped in cloths. Now the son of God, Through whom all things were made, Hangs naked before his creation. There's no one to cover him, no one to cover his shame, not even his mother. God hangs naked, taking upon himself Adam's nakedness, the fruit of the garden that puts himself of Adam's desire, our desire to be God. Our desire to be God comes through our pet sins, things that we don't even think are that bad. He is punched for them. White lies, gossip, hatred, lust, gross sins, things that we know are evil, yet we've done anyway. Things of which we are ashamed, or worse, not ashamed. Despising of his word, taking his name in vain, cussing the worse than even the pagans. Ignoring those in authority, dismissing the care to those that God has gifted us. Then there's abortion, murder, pornography, adultery, stealing, cheating, slander, coveting, to name a few. And all of it boils down to one thing of wanting to be God. Our wanting to be God. The serpent's temptation. You can be like God. You can be your own God. Adam and Eve and all of us went from good to not good on that day. Jesus Christ bears it all takes it all upon himself, becomes it all. He who knew no sin becomes your sin. That is what it means when he bears your sin. He becomes it. Every bit of wrath that God has, righteous indignation and justifiable hatred for our sin, Jesus bears it all. God hates, yes, he does. He hates sin. He hates those who do those sins. Have doubt about this? See what our sins have caused. God has gotten his hands on a sinner and crucified him. You think your sins are scary? Yes, they are. What's worse than your sins? The anger and hatred of Almighty God. And the Son of God bears it all. Every last bit of anger that God has at every sin and every sinner since Adam and Eve. Until now. Every curse, every punishment, every bit of hell of all is flung at the Son of God and he hangs on the cross for you. It is finished. Christ speaks this, past tense, completed. To fulfill the scripture, he called out, I thirst. A sponge with wine was put on a hyssop to reach up to his lips. Hyssop branches were used to sprinkle the blood of the Passover upon the people. Now it holds a sponge to the lips of the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. 
when Jesus knew that he had completed all things, that he had fulfilled all things. Everything had been fulfilled. Every promise made to the son of Adam. The serpent's head crushed. The seed of Adam struck. Every word fulfilled. Every law kept. Every bit of God's hatred endured. Everything accomplished. It is finished. It is settled. He has kept the law in our place, counting it for us. As if we have done it. The whole law. It is finished, it is settled. All our sins and all our transgressions, the pet and gross sins that have been answered, the wrath of God endured. And with that, with everything finished, he gave up his spirit. Gave up. This has been planned all along to save you and me from our sins, to rescue us from the horror of God's wrath, and hatred for our sins by fulfilling all that God requires, then paying the debt for all that God requires of us. The Son of Man gives up His Spirit. The Eternal Son, God Himself, dies for you. Our Lord Jesus dies to make you holy. Our Lord Jesus dies to make you right with God. And this is the answer to your sins, your guilty conscience, your pain, your suffering. This is your Heavenly Father's answer to Adam's fall and your fall too. God is crucified for you in your place on your behalf. His last cry is the end of your sins, your transgressions, the end of the punishment for sin for you, the end of hell for you, the end of anything from God but the eternal proclamation from God to you that you are finally good. Today is Good Friday, not Black Friday. It's Good Friday because God today makes his creation good. He himself answers for his creation's crimes. He shows the whole world that God doesn't harbour anger forever, but sees it upon his Son. Our Lord Jesus is dead to destroy our death. Our Lord Jesus will rise, just as he said. And today, this Good Friday, the one who is crucified for you, calls you with his last breath. Good. You are good. Finally, good in God's eyes. And now, having heard this word, may the peace which God goes beyond all human understanding grant and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And let us confess together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen.
The Lord be with you and also with you. For our prayer of the church, with the words, we beg you, I invite you to respond to hear us, good Lord. Let us pray. Open our hearts, O Lord, that the word of the cross that we have heard may have its home in our hearts and that we keep it faithful until Christ brings all things to their fulfilment when he comes again. We beg you to hear us, good Lord. Grant to us, O Lord, all gifts and blessings of the Spirit, that we may faithfully serve him who has been able to save us from death with words of witness and acts of service in his name. We beg you to hear us, good Lord. Teach us obedience, O Lord, that we may rightly confess the gospel and live in harmony of faith and life as your church. Bless all the ministers of your church and all their service to us in your name. We beg you to hear us, good Lord. Bless the nations with peace, O Lord, and with freedom, so that in every place your people may gather for worship without fear and with unfettered freedom proclaim your truth to all people. We beg you to hear us, good Lord. Bring to completion, O Lord, all that you began in us in our baptism. Lead us to be joyful in adversity, faithful in persecution, and to endure the troubles and trials of this mortal life. We beg you to hear us, good Lord. Give to us patience, O Lord, so that we may not grow weary of heart, but endure in faith and in faithful service to you, and to the poor in your name. We beg you to hear us, good Lord. Bless the work of our hands, O Lord, and especially the artists and artisans who proclaim your gospel in image and form. Guide us to love all things excellent, holy and beautiful. We beg you to hear us, good Lord. Protect us, O Lord, from all our enemies and from the enemies of your kingdom that the cause of the gospel and its saving voice may not be hindered by anything or anyone, but go forth to accomplish your purpose as you have promised. We beg you to hear us, good Lord. Hear us, O Lord, that we may draw near with confidence to your throne of your grace, to receive your mercy you have promised and to fulfil grace sufficient for our needs. We beg you to hear us, Good Lord. Finally, let us with boldness and all those things for which our Lord would have us ask. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross you have redeemed the world. <laughs> 